What is up, YouTube? This is John Helm with Helmwood Shop and Smithy, back with another knife making video. I just got something in the mail and I'm excited. Let's go open it. This is a vacuum chamber that I just got off of Amazon. It came with a pump. It was really cheap. It is the Baco one and a half gallon vacuum pump chamber kit with 3.6 CFM one stage vacuum pump HVAC. Whatever the hell all that means, it was 156 bucks, which is pretty cheap. I looked around, I saw a lot of different models, and most of them go for a lot more than that. Some of them were like six, seven hundred bucks, which I can't do that, man. <laughs> but 150 I can do, so let's open it up and see what's inside. All right, it is a box filled with smaller boxes. Awesome. All right, let's open up the pump first. An operating manual. Packed very well in styrofoam. Bottle of vacuum pump oil. And the pump itself. This pump feels very solidly constructed. Just about everything on it is made out of metal, except for this piece on the top, which houses the power unit. It is made out of plastic, but even then it's not, it's not dinky feeling plastic. It feels like pretty heavy duty stuff. It weighs a lot more than I expected it would. So I'm pretty happy so far. Of course, I haven't plugged it in yet. <laughs> All right, let's open up the vacuum chamber. Again, everything's packaged very well. So it's like this is the lid to it. it. Comes with a hose, a bunch of stuff that I don't know what it is. I'm not sure what this is exactly. It looks like fiberglass mesh, something like that. And the chamber itself. All right, I'm gonna look in the manual and see how to put this thing together. I really have no idea what this pad is for, and it doesn't say anywhere in in the pamphlet. It actually doesn't say anything about um, how to set up the vacuum chamber itself and the vacuum chamber manual, all it talks about is the pump. But the pump came with its own manual. <laughs> so I don't need it reiterated here. I need instructions to tell me what the hell this thing is. Anyway, I'm sure I'm just having a blonde moment. If any of y'all know uh, what this fiberglass pad thing is, uh, let me know in the comments, I'd appreciate it. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory though. You have a lid, it has a gasket, you hook up a hose to this, and then you hook that hose up to your pump and the pump sucks all the air out. Moving on, this is the pump, and it needs to be filled with oil. And add the oil in very slowly, making sure I don't overfill it. It accepts exactly the amount of oil that they've provided. Spilled a little bit, because I'm a klutz. All right, and put the cap back on. So now we just need to hook this, up to that. I imagine that there are appropriate fittings on this hose. There are, and they appear to be of the same sort, so just screw it on there. Everything appears to be in order. I guess I'm gonna have to stabilize some wood, huh? So I have this big chunk of wood. I don't know exactly what it is. It's very hard. It's been drying in my garage for probably about three years now, so I know that it's good, ready to stabilize. So I'm gonna mill down a few pieces, see if I can identify it once I get a good look at the grain, and then we'll put it in the vacuum chamber. Well, the end grain doesn't tell me a whole lot, but I'm gonna rip it down on the table saw. From the color and the grain of this wood, I'm pretty sure that it is European beech wood. Outstanding, this is a beautiful wood, and I'm pretty excited to be able to stabilize a bunch of it for some handles. Anyway, enough about that. Let's see if we can get all that resin inside all this wood. So I have everything set up here. I have some wood ready to go. These are two blanks of European beech wood, two blanks of uh, Spanish cedar, which is a soft wood. I wouldn't generally use it for knife handles. But I was just curious to see how dense it would get with stabilization. So if it's not good enough for a knife handle, I'll just use it to make some file handles or something around the shop. And two pieces of black walnut. So it is my understanding that you just chuck these in here. 
Now, in the videos I watched, they had uh, like a special metal plate that they set down on top of these to stop them from floating. I don't have one of those, but I have a two and a half pound plate from my dumbbell set. So I guess I'll just throw that in there. And then the product I'm gonna be using to stabilize these is this, SOS 3.0 resin. The most advanced stabilizing resin. At least that's what it says on the label. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So I will just fill up this chamber until it's a little bit higher than the top level of the wood. I'm gonna need a bigger weight. Let me get a five pounder. There we go, that'll do it. So now I will just put this cap on. So I want this valve that is connected to the vacuum chamber to be open. I want this one closed. It appears that they are the way they're supposed to be, so let's plug it in and turn on the vacuum. All right, keep your fingers crossed. Crossed. Keep your fingers crossed and lift off. No vacuum, huh? There we go. Yeah, I just had to mess with the valves a little bit. I got it up to, uh, what is that, 25? And you can see all the air coming out of the wood right now. I wish I was filming when I finally got it up to 25 because the initial burst of air coming out of the wood, it, it was insane. I definitely wasn't getting even close to this amount of vacuum inside of the jar, and you can really see the difference here. I read that a frequent problem people have is that if they want to detach the uh, vacuum pump from the chamber, that the valve will slowly leak out pressure. So I'm going to shut this valve. It's up. It's up. Yeah, I lost like two pounds of pressure disconnecting the hose, or two pounds of vacuum rather. So uh, I think we're gonna be good. Hopefully it holds that over a long period of time. It's been, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, and uh, this gauge hasn't moved at all. It's holding vacuum very well. There's still a lot of air coming out of the wood, which means there's still a lot of void to fill. So I'm gonna leave it in there until it stops bubbling for a while. Then I'll take it out and we'll cure it in the oven. The bubbles coming out of the wood really slowed down to a trickle after about an hour. So I went ahead and turned the vacuum back on and brought this all the way up to 30 and bubbles just started pouring out of the end grain of these. But this isn't about me learning how to stabilize wood. This is about this product that I got and it is holding that really high vacuum, no problems at all. It appears to function perfectly, which is absolutely outstanding, especially considering the price point. Since I have the ability to mill wood that I harvest from my yard, or when other people cut trees down, I can load it up in the back of my little Kia Forte and drive it back to my house. Being able to stabilize that wood myself will save me a ton of money in the long run. If you've seen the prices of stabilized wood, it is not cheap, and I can see why now it's not because of any amount of materials, it's because it's just a lot of work getting it to the point that you need it to be. Set of nice stabilized scales could easily be 20 to $30, and now it costs me almost nothing. So this investment is gonna pay itself off for me really fast. And it looks like I picked a pretty good machine to go with. If you're looking for an economy vacuum chamber for stabilizing handle scales at home, this is definitely one that you should look at. It's also worth noting that I don't have any affiliation with this company or with Amazon where I bought it. I don't get any kickbacks and they're not a sponsor of the show. So I'm actually just giving you my advice and what I think about this product that I just got. And so far, the price is great. The performance is great so far. We'll see how long it holds up. Of course, it is cheaper. It's probably not going to last quite as long as a more expensive pump would, but right out of the gate, I have zero issues with it. So I will leave a link down in the description if you wanna go check this out on Amazon. And I will also leave a link for the stabilizing resin that I bought. It is yet to be determined how well the stabilizing resin works. I'll actually have to make a knife out of the scales to determine that. And I'm sure I'll bring that up in a future video. Which brings me to, if you enjoyed this video or you wanna see more videos like it, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell so you can see when I come out with new videos in the future. So until next time, y'all have a good one.